There's something in A-level chemistry that looks a little different each time it comes up in the exams, and the specifications aren't always helpful in making it clear what you're actually meant to know about it. It's called the rate determining step, and on the OCRA A-level in chemistry, it's found in module 5. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you some facts about the rate determining step that should help you with any scenario they can throw your way in the exam and hopefully boost your confidence with it. Okay, so what is the rate determining step? We describe the rate determining step as the slowest step in a mechanism. And remember that a mechanism is a series of stages that really represent the behind the scenes of the reaction equation. So what do I need to know about the rate determining step when it comes to this mechanism then? Well, the rate determining step is going to be one of the steps in this mechanism, and the reactants in the rate determining step must only be those which are shown in the rate equation for the chemical reaction. Remember that the concentrations in the rate equation may be different than those which are shown in the reaction equation, and those that you place in the rate determining step of the mechanism must be in the correct proportions. More on this later. What else do I need to know about my mechanism steps? Well, all the mechanism steps, including the rate determining step, must combine together. That means all the left hand sides become one left hand side and all the right hand sides become one big right hand side with a bit of cancelling down to give the overall reaction equation. Now, these two are the really important bits of information that you need to know about the rate determining step theory that are going to help you from one question to the next. Let's have a look at them in action here, and I'll leave the two facts at the top with this adaptation of an OCR question that's come up before. Here you've been presented with a reaction equation using iron-3 and iodide ions to make iron-2 ions and iodine, and a rate equation that shows that the iron-3 ions are first order and the iodide ions are second order. And what this exam question got you to do would suggest a two-step mechanism that can be used for the reaction equation considering all this information. Now, when you're suggesting a two-step mechanism, I would always recommend making the rate determining step step number one. This means you've got a pattern then from one scenario to the next, and it allows you to come up with a set of rules. Those of which I'm going to describe to you now are usually always accepted, and we've got a really set of important facts at the top that we need to demonstrate the use of. So what are my reactants going to be in my rate determining step, which is step one of this mechanism? Well, we need to consult fact number one for this then, don't we? Here it says that the reactants in the rate determining step must be those which are shown in the rate equation and they need to be in the correct proportions. Can you see here how I've used iron three and iodide and they are in a one to two ratio in this rate determining step? Well, that's because they are order one and order two in the rate equation. But hang on, does it not matter that if we look at the reaction equation, I haven't actually used one of the iron three ions that's used as a reactant there? Don't worry about it. I'm going to come back to it shortly. So what about the products here? What do I make? Well, this can be a little trickier, but most smart schemes will often accept something like this. It's an intermediate that isn't shown in the overall reaction equation. And it's basically just a combination of the iron 3 and the iodide ions I'm using as the reactants in this rate determining step. All the atoms and charge balance from one side of the equation to the other here, so it's a completely valid suggestion to have made in this process. So do I not need to worry about it not appearing in the overall reaction equation? Absolutely not. This combination of those reactants is an intermediate which means I'm going to create it, and if you look to the second line, I'm going to destroy it straight away. I'm going to get rid of it. And what that means is I can meet fact number two. This FeI2 positive is going to get cancelled down when I combine the two steps of this two-step mechanism together. It's going to disappear, and so I don't need to worry about it. It's just a means to an end and allows me to make this two-step mechanism suggestion using all the criteria at the top of the screen. So now what do I need to do with the rest of this second stage? Well, I need to make sure I use up any unreacted reactants here that I've not chosen yet, which means I'm going to go back for that iron 3 ion that I didn't use. I only used one of them in the rate determining step, remember, because the rate equation told me that's what I had to do. 
but the reaction equation had two lots of the iron 3 ion. Well, here comes the other one. Now, the products here is nice and easy. All I need to use are all the products from the overall reaction equation. I've not made any of them yet, and I don't need to consult the rate equation for this. So here you can see my products are the iron 2 ions and the iodine. If I look at the second fact that's at the top of the screen, all the mechanism steps need to cancel down and they need to combine together to give the overall equation that I've got just underneath the facts at the top of the screen. If I was to do so with my two-step mechanism suggestion, you see I achieve exactly that. On my left-hand side, I've got the two iron 3s and the iodide, and then on the right-hand side, I've got the two iron 2s and the iodine, because the FeI2 pluses are going to cancel down because they're the same on either side of the arrows. It's perfect. Hopefully you can see these two facts in action here and it gives you something that you can use from one exam question to the next, all to do with the rate determining step. So what are you going to watch next? Well, next up, I'd recommend keeping it with rate of reaction and have a look at this order of reaction video that should help you to decide how to fill in those pesky initial rates tables. But otherwise, until next time, happy revising.